All right, everybody, we are in week three of our Hidden Potential online Bible study. You know us as Kendra, your Bible study friend, mm -hmm. and Wendy, your Bible study friend and Bible study teacher. Weepo. And author and it, Weepo. It's Weepo now. You're right. It's week, week three. I week three. Week three. We're about at Weepo. There we go. Okay, so yeah. we're getting to Weepo, everybody. If you don't know what that means, it just means when you, are, when you have a friendship, you call him by a nickname, and exactly. so that's what we're doing with Wendy though. <laughs> and so Wendy, before we get into right. your teaching this week, I just have a few fun questions because I think week three is like, we can stretch, we can get uh -huh. ready for what we have coming down the pipeline. Okay. And so um, with COVID-19, we are all told to shelter in place. And so that mm -hmm. means we need to get creative with what we do at home, right? right? And so I would love to know, what is your favorite sheltering in place activity? Well, we have just cut the cable cord at our house and I have found streaming. Ooh. And so we have gotten to all kinds of these little streaming apps and I know I'm late in the game, I get it. I, I'm it's usually just, late to the trend train too. I am, I'm yeah. not the first on the trend train. Um, I like that trend train. Choo -choo. I'm gonna use that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my favorite thing has been discovering old television shows. Oh, fun! And just watching them. I mean, I don't sit and do nothing, but I have them on, and it's just it's a nice break because none of the new series, all the series, had to be canceled right. or stopped because of COVID. So it's been fun to reacquaint myself with old people, old characters, and storylines. There you story go. Lines. It's fine nostalgia, right? Uh -huh. Nostalgia Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. That's I've fun. That. All right. What is your favorite Bible verse? Because I'm sure as a Bible study teacher and lover of God's word, there's something it that is. you cling to. My favorite Bible verse is Deuteronomy 29, 29. Okay. Which is? The Lord our God has secrets known to no one, and we are not accountable for them. However, we are accountable for that which is revealed to us. And I think you have said that to me before, if I remember correctly, uh -huh. and it's because... It gives you the freedom to read God's Word. It gives me the freedom to read God's Word and not understand it. There we go. Yes. Which there I you go. so profound. That is worth the price of admission for today. Truly. Mm -hmm. Truly. Yes. And then, all right, last but not least, uh -huh. I think it's important in Bible study or if you gather at somebody's home to go through Bible study that you have snacks. And so what's your favorite go-to snack? My favorite go-to snack is anything Ghirardelli. So good. Anything Ghirardelli. My that favorite chocolate. candy is the dark chocolate raspberry squares. Mm. But kind of my go-to that I keep always in my cabinet are the chocolate chips. Dark chocolate, because oh. it's the healthy one. Yeah. So, yeah, the dark chocolate. The older I get, the more I'm prone to dark chocolate. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a lover of dark chocolate. <laughs> but the milk chocolate has changed over the years. I don't know if it's changed <laughs> or my or taste buds have changed. changed. Yes, because Swiss cake rolls used to be really good, and they're not <laughs> anymore. So I'm sure it's me. I'm sure it's me. Oh, that is good. <laughs> That's so good. All right, everybody. Well, go ahead and go get your favorite go-to snack, because right. Wendy is about to teach us uh, the third question we're going to talk about for Chapter 3, which is... Is, can I be faithful even though I'm afraid? And we know the answer is yes. Yes. But. But. <laughs> what yes, does that mean? But. We have to let God work mm. in us through our failures. And we can't let Satan lie to us about them. Yeah. Um, so I thought I would share one of my greatest fears. Okay. To start the lesson out today. Um, and so forgive me if I get emotional because it's still... Mm. It's still a very real fear to me. Um, and I'd want to be very sensitive, especially to my friend Sherry, who shared her profile. Yes. Um, Possibility profile. Um, this week. But I, had, I want to be sensitive to those who are widows. Mm. I'm very, very sensitive to that. Uh, but that has been my fear. Um, really, a few years into my marriage, when my husband started traveling with his job, mm -hmm. that I would be a young widow. And um, that he would perish in a plane crash. I mean, it's very specific. I was say it's very specific. Very specific. Um, and it is. It. I just dreaded for him to get pack his bag, um, and especially after we had our children. I remember one year, um, he went on his left on his trip. I took him to the airport, dropped him off, and came back and went to pull the covers back you know, at mm -hmm. night to get in, and he had left me a card. I thought you were going to say there was like a snake in your no. bag or something. <laughs> no. Like, oh, oh, no. But, okay, no. A card, um, a card yeah. was so sweet with the with just a sweet sentiment and then ended with, if something were to ever happen to me, oh, no. okay, mm -hmm. that language, and then that just fed into say, the fears. And over the years, I have learned 
by talking about that fear mm -hmm. with other people. Like I remember specifically in a Bible study, the first time I admitted it, we were with, um, we did a staff Bible study many, many years ago when our staff at Proverbs was a lot smaller. We mm -hmm. sat around a glass table and we had lunch together and we did Bible study once a week. And I remember Barb Spencer was leading it and I don't know how it came up, but I remember confessing that mm -hmm. out loud for the first time safely with these yeah. wonderful ladies that I worked with. So the more we voice our fears, I believe they lose power mm -hmm. over us. However, we still have to continue to give them back to God because here's the thing, um, I still struggle with it. Uh, recently, well, within the last couple years, my mom had um, a stroke and my brother and I were taking turns sharing uh, the responsibility of spending the night with them. Yeah. Because actually when my mom had her stroke, my dad broke his arm oh. at the hospitals visiting her. So we had two convalescent mm -hmm. uh, senior adults that we were taking care of. And so we took turns. Well, I remember just being sleep deprived, yeah. um, hungry, uh, ready to be at home with my people, with right. my things in my bed kind of idea. I'd been with my parents for uh, three days, calling my husband to let him know that I would be coming home and what time I would be coming home. I called him like 13, 14 times, left messages, never got a hold of him. Yeah. Oh. And the fear yeah. that I dealt with took over me. Mm -hmm. And when I got home, he was there. He had not received any of the messages. Mm -hmm. The phone had, didn't, for some reason, had malfunctioned. But I realized at that point that I was still dealing with the fear so I want you to know as you enter this chapter, yeah. it's still a very real, fear can still be very real. It, those in the moment fears are very real, but we don't want them to become a way of life fear. Yeah. And we, we avoid that by constantly talking about them, acknowledging right. them. Right, bringing them to light. Bringing right? them to light. And in that situation, I was tired, sleep deprived, hungry, and I allowed my imagination to go mm -hmm. away with, to get away from me. Um, but we don't want the fear to become a way of life. There's two types of fears that I identify in this chapter. And one is the fear that traps. Mm. And one is the fear that frees. Okay. All right. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time on the fear that traps. I think it's pretty obvious right. by just my story. Um and then also, just a great example of that, if you, if you want to look at that, is going and looking at that conversation between um, this uh, the serpent and Eve at the very beginning of how right he places that doubt, that fear of being caught by God and mm -hmm. hiding and the shame and all of that, right. um, that the enemy has a plan for our lives, Ephesians 6 says. There's mm -hmm. schemes and plans that happen, and he wants to keep us as we've identified, even with failures, paralyzed our yeah. faith to be so paralyzed. Then we can't move and do things for God. We can't if we're paralyzed and stuck. Exactly, we can't. We can't. Yeah. I can't take this risk. I think of the the person that feels called maybe to go to the mission field. Yeah, and and to go to another country. I can't because I'm scared of flying. Right. I can't because I'm afraid that I don't have the resources. I don't have the fear will keep us from doing mm -hmm. what God has called us to do. And Moses definitely had his own fears. Yeah. Um, and he faced those as he walked during walked up to that burning bush. And he faced those as he argued with God in chapter 3 and 4 of Exodus and hammered those out right. and still walked out that calling that God placed on his life. But I want to focus here on the, freed, on the fear that frees. Yeah. It's the reverent and respectful fear of God. Mm -hmm. It's putting God in his rightful place as the one that's sovereign. It's believing and trusting that he can, even if he isn't right then. Right. That he is capable of handling all of the things that we have to give him. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you will look in John 8, this is a wonderful, wonderful two verses. John 8, 31 and 32. Jesus is talking to... Um, 
to the people here. He says, to the Jews we have believed, who have believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. That's how we can be identified as holding to God's That's teachings. Good. But then he says, you will know the truth. And I bet, Kendra, you are familiar with this phrase. <laughs> we are around here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. You will know the truth. Yeah. And the truth will what? Set you free. It sets you free. Mm -hmm. And the key there, Kendra, is knowing the truth. Yeah. It's what we love to do here at Proverbs. Exactly. Yeah. And when we know the truth, we can still have a fear, but we can have a healthy fear. We might still have those in the moment fears. Yeah. But we have an even greater fear, that trust and that respect of God. Even if the worst thing, mm -hmm. the worst thing that I could imagine could happen to me, you're still God. Yeah. You still have my best interest at heart. You still love me and you still have the best plans for me. Yeah. And once we wrap our heads around that, we know that we can trust him. And we can move forward. We don't have to be stuck there. Right. One of my favorite verses, and I believe this is one of um, Wendy One's favorite verse. Oh, Wendy, Wendy One, Blight meaning is, Wendy Blake. Exactly. Yes. Isaiah 26, 3. And I'm not going to turn to that, but I have it written in my notes. And you might want to make a note of that in your notes today if you're taking notes. Is You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So when we keep our minds reverently focused on God. He keeps us in perfect peace. So we have to know the, the fear. We right. have to own the fear, but we can be free yeah. from the fear. There you go. That's good, Wendy. Especially, I felt like you gave people freedom to it be okay if we are fearful it's of things, okay. right? Whether yes. that's loss or sickness or right. whatever that fear may be. But you gave us an action step, which is to know the truth of God's word. Absolutely. Focus on it. And knowing that he is still good. And look up verses about fear. Yeah. One of my favorite things is that uh, search in BibleGateway.com. Mm -hmm. It's the simplest site to use. Keyword search. Type in fear. Yeah. And see how many times it's mentioned. Yeah. And learn some of those verses and hold those true. I used to put them on my mirror. With in my post -it car, note? with post-it notes. You knew it. Yes, of course. <laughs> I love my post-it notes. Well, good. All right, Wendy. Well, thank you for taking us through that question. We hope you guys enjoy week three, chapter three, and we will see you next week. And remember, when you know the truth and live the truth, it what, Wendy? It changes everything. That's right. Bye, everybody.